How's it going guys? Today we're going to talk about weapons. We're going to start talking about weapons. Weapons is a huge category. We're going to talk about the very, very basics. So if I go to my good old Rhino tank here and I go down to a flag called primary, I see that it's equal to 120 millimeter. So if I just uh, do a quick search, 120 millimeter, I'll add a square bracket to find it. All right, one second. Copy this, put it square bracket 120 millimeter it takes me to here this is the rhino tanks weapon now we could go through a few of these flags and uh, some of them will be obvious some of them will be less obvious but uh, we see damage equals 90 rate of fire equals 65 range equals 5.75 right and so on and so forth uh, we're not going to go into all of these flags right now but we are going to edit a few of them like the damage rate of fire and range and only the basics at this moment. Now, I've got to be careful because if I just take the 120 millimeter, right? I'm going to take these three numbers and I'm going to start playing around with them, right? So maybe I'll, uh, I want the Rhino to be super strong, so I'll give it damage of 150, right? I double the damage. What I need to be careful of is 120 millimeter is the weapon name, but maybe not only the Rhino uses it. Right, so I search 120 millimeter, and in a primary, I only see primary equals, right, or secondary equals, or elite primary equals. I only see the Rhino using this, so I know that when I'm editing the 120 millimeter, I'm good, right? Nothing else is uh, using this weapon, and therefore it is okay to edit it. If that weren't the case, right? What I would do is I would create a clone of this weapon, right? I would perhaps write here, um, new rhino weapon, all right? So I've got the new rhino weapon here. Weapons don't need to go into a specific list. Like if I was adding a new unit, a new warhead or anything else, I would also have to add it to a special list to let the game know, hey, I've added a new, a new building, right? Uh, with a Rhino, I don't need to do that, right? But uh, let's say I'm cloning this weapon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the weapon and just copy everything this weapon has and then just paste it right over here, right? Now I have the new Rhino weapon. Now, obviously, I need to tell the game, right, that, uh, hey, I want the Rhino to now use this new Rhino weapon. So I would copy the Rhino header Obviously, the name is always important to copy so that I know what I'm dealing with. And then what I would do is I would take the primary and instead of it being 120 millimeter, I would copy this over here, paste it here. And now from now on, the Rhino tank is going to be using this weapon. So let's go to an extreme here and give it damage of 500. Test that out. See what happens. All right. So we're just going to save this. All right. It's already in the right folder i'm just going to copy the name here so that uh, when i do load map i could just control v to paste that name right there go to my standard folder look for le test map there we go the bottom one of course is the one i'm looking for let's launch a game here as soviet make a rhino tank and see how powerful we just made the rhino tank so we're quickly going to build a war factory as fast as we can. Just so that we could see the insane damage. All right, we got the rhino here. Now we know that a rhino to kill each other usually takes a few seconds. But now it one shots it. Let me slow down the game real quick here and attack a bigger building. So if I go here and I tell to attack the MCV, for example, bam, one shot. It only takes a few shots to destroy the MCV. MCVs do have concrete armor. They're a little harder to take care of with four shots to kill an MCV. Now that's a powerful Rhino. What about a War Factory? One, two, and then a third shot will probably take this War Factory down. Oh, it looks like it takes a four shot. So as you can see, the damage is way stronger. Let's try and attack a Miner real quick. Just to see how many shots it takes to kill a Miner with 500 damage. Oh, it's missed. <laughs> <laughs> missed again all right stop moving one two three shots and it's dead 
All right, so that's the damage. As you can see, we can raise it, lower it according to what we want. Um, let's see what happens if we increase the rate of fire, right? So here's the thing about rate of fire. The higher it is, the slower it shoots. The lower it is, the faster it shoots. So for example, if I change this to 10, it's only going to have to wait 10 frames between every shot. So if I load in the map now and I go to the map again, let's launch it up again and see how fast my Rhino tank shoots now. In theory, it should be shooting shots, spitting them out six times faster than it usually does, only having to wait 10 frames between every shot. So let's uh, make a Rhino tank here real quick, so slow down the game a little bit and uh, attack the ground, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> As you can see, the Rhino tank is shooting pretty damn fast here, and with a 500 damage, it just melts everything. So again, if I wanted it to shoot slower, I would have raised that number, right? So let's, let's try the other way around. What if I give it a rate of fire of 500, just for fun, right? We'll launch a game real quick here, and we'll see how long it takes in between shots. So, I'll quickly make a war factory. And in theory now, when I tell the Rhino to attack, it's going to have to wait a long time between shots. So, let's just slow the game down real quick here. And let's attack the ground. Alright, one shot immediately. And then we're just waiting, 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 waiting. 500 frames we're gonna have to wait before the next shot appears and there it is so that is the rate of fire and uh, I think the range is uh, is pretty obvious right if I make the range zero for example right let's see what happens in theory my rhino tank is gonna have to come right next to the targets in order to attack it so we'll make a war factor real quick now let's see how, uh, like if I go here and I tell to attack the power plant, as you can see it can't even attack it, it requires a range of 1 to attack, apparently 0 range is nothing. So a weapon with no range is like having no weapon at all. And uh, let's try the other way around, let's see what happens if we raise that range up. Now there is a maximum on the range, but let's try just for example 10 on the Rhino tank, just for fun. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm going to load in the map. Obviously, you could play around with this. Try and uh, get the exact number you want for your mod. Uh, but this should increase the range. So it should be able to shoot now from really far away. I think we still left the rate of fire very low. Or very high. Depends how you want to look at it. But now if I take this round and take an attack hit from here. It is much further from the target than it normally would need to be with a range of 10 again because it's ballistic it's a little bit different range of 10 will be bigger with other things but as you can see the range has increased quite substantially for a rhino tank doubled actually it's like 5.75 i think in vanilla or 5.5 anyway that is the basics of damage rate of fire and range now there's a few more things we should talk about. One of them is the elite primary. Elite primary. So this is the weapon it's going to use when it becomes elite, right? As its primary weapon. Uh, let's just put this, right? Because we know. So if I take the elite weapon and I tell it, listen, this is the primary weapon, the 120 millimeter. So now even if it's not elite, it's going to use the elite weapon. Oh, I don't think I load in the map. Let's try that again. Uh, so I'm just going to load in the map here, move on to the next one, and now it's vanilla weapon is going to be it's elite weapon, right? So without being elite, it's already going to have the elite weapon. Let's see if that is the case here. I make a war factor, here's a rhino, and now when I shoot the ground, as you can see it already has it's elite weapon. So that's how you choose which uh, elite weapon it's going to be. And obviously if you feel, you know, maybe the Rhino's elite weapon is overpowered, right? So you would go to the 120 millimeter elite here. You'd look at the stats, right? And you'd say, you know, maybe I want to I want to change a few stuff here. Maybe I want to change a few stuff here. 
The next thing we need to talk about is secondary. All right, so there's a primary and then there's a secondary. The secondary is the secondary weapon that uh, a unit is going to use. So, for example, let's take the APOC. That's a good example. All right, the APOC has a primary as 120 millimeter X, and the secondary is the Mammoth Tusk. Right, because we know that when it attacks ground, it uses you know the regular shots on the ground, but when it attacks air, it uses something completely different. So that's why you know maybe you want primary for some things, secondary for other things. Uh, as we get it deeper and deeper into the weapon system and the damage system and how do you attack air and how do you attack ground, you're going to see more and more examples of when you would want to have two separate weapons for two separate things. There are a few special cases, uh, like the engineer and the dog, for example, which have two weapons, uh, each is for a different purpose. Anyway, that is it for, to for today, the very basics of weapons. I hope you had fun and I'll catch you guys next time.